By design, prisons are places shut off from the rest of society. But the state's newest and largest prison is unlike any other. It's run by a private company with public money. Lawmakers say they've been kept out. Volunteers say they too have been turned away. And the Channel 4i team was told months ago we would not be visiting this facility or interviewing anyone connected to the company, Core Civic. But some former employees and inmate families are telling us plenty, calling the new Trousdale Turner Correctional Facility the worst prison they have ever seen. They treat them like animals. And he went like a week without clothes. He was sitting there in his underwear? Yeah. They came and said they didn't have enough food, that we weren't going to eat. And you he could hear screaming and pain, asking for help, and did not get it and passed. Contraband, assault, weapon, defiance, possession. I mean, this, this goes on and on and on. Possession of deadly weapon. And, and keep in mind, this is just one day. It's a challenge to tell the story of the Trousdale Turner Correctional Facility when no one from the state or the prison will grant an interview and we haven't had a tour of the place. The Channel 4i team has relied on interviews with several current and former employees, lawmakers, advocates, and family members of those housed at Trousdale Turner. We've obtained internal documents and some public records we requested and were initially billed hundreds of dollars for but only after many months of stonewalling by Core Civic. The stories we're hearing consistently describe a prison severely understaffed and overrun with gangs, violence, drugs, and inefficiency. A place where medium security inmates, men who theoretically pose a moderate risk, have been locked down in cells for weeks, without showers and sometimes without food. And these lockdowns didn't last one or two days. These would last for weeks and weeks and weeks. And when you can take that many men and put them in a pressure tank, you know, you're going to have problems. As chaplain at Trousdale, Jackie Stubel says she saw plenty of problems and meticulously documented them. Just a month into the job, she was told by an inmate that a half dozen sharp daggers were hidden in a ceiling. They would go up through a vent an air conditioning vent, go up into the ceiling, unscrew part of the roof, and some of those shanks were this long. And they were selling them. It was quite a business by this one inmate, and they were selling them. But the door was open, quite literally, for the same thing to happen again. When we left, they didn't lock the utility door back. And so the, the opening was still there. I told the correctional officer, I said, this really needs to be secured, this area because he'll just go back up again into the ceiling. And that's just one example of what the former chaplain calls lax security. This incident report tells an astounding story of an inmate who controlled all the keys to the educational offices and more, with the administrator's blessing. And they found keys, Thomas codes, and, and Thomas is the computer system of the State Department, Tennessee Department of Corrections, entry, passwords and so forth, in this inmate, Joseph Brennan's cell. You could access the entire Tennessee Department of Corrections computer system. The teachers had to go to the inmate to get the keys in education. Then there was a suicidal inmate discovered hanging in a cell. I heard on the radio, cut down to immediately. And so I went to the cell block myself because that cut down tool means there's suicide. They told me you can't go in there chaplain to the cell. I said yes I can and I went in and they here's a man hanging and they're spraying him with pepper spray and I'm holding his hand and it's covered with pepper spray and I said brother I'm with you I'm with you you're not alone but he was covered with pepper spray. He was not a threat. <laughs> I mean when you're dangling like this that's the response. Spray him. Excessive use of pepper spray at Trousdale was criticized by the Department of Corrections' own top brass shortly after the Trousdale prison opened. Correctional Administrator Tony Howerton, after seeing a video of a disciplinary takedown, wrote, The inmate, in my opinion, was already compliant, but he was sprayed. He called the action, at a minimum, unnecessary force, but could be classified as excessive force. 
We asked to see that video, but CoreCivic refused, saying it would reveal too much about security. But this internal memo obtained by the Channel 4i team reveals some very telling numbers. It shows Trousdale Turner number one on the list of Tennessee prisons when it comes to using chemical agents. 102 incidents in a 10-month span, compared to just seven at Riverbend, the state prison that houses death row. Riverbend holds just over 800 prisoners, Trousdale more than 2,600. Still, the five highest numbers on this list, where pepper spray was used the most, are all places the state has entrusted to Core Civic. Apart from pepper spray, the former chaplain says force was many times excessive and unforgettable. I saw Lieutenant and Yard Sergeant beating a prisoner who was on the floor his hands were shackled behind his back. He had cuffs. He was cuffed. Hitting him and hitting him and hitting him. That's not right. I mean, that's, that's inhumane. And I will never get that image out of my mind. Prison jobs not only help inmates pass the time, they're designed to teach skills that can be useful in the free world. But are some of those inmate jobs offering an opportunity to victimize unsuspecting people? The Tennessee Department of Correction is now investigating something the News 4i team brought to their attention. And it happened at a prison entrusted to the private company, CoreCivic. A former inmate says the information he got his hands on could have been a gold mine behind bars. It's a common part of any office IT policy. Don't store personal information on your work computer. But let's face it, that rule often gets broken. And in the case of one state employee, very sensitive and personal information ended up here, in a prison, South Central Correctional Facility in Clifton. They're supposed to go through them and, and erase the hard drives and send them to us with nothing on them. James Middleton spent seven years and four months behind bars for rape. He had technical ability and landed a plum job behind bars, refurbishing state computers. And we were supposed to check them, make sure they worked. If they didn't, then disassemble them, clean them up, put them back together, and put an operating system on them. The Department of Corrections says the computer work pays anywhere from 34 to 50 cents an hour. That's a pretty good prison wage. Surplus computers from various state agencies were sent to South Central, and the state says the sending agency erased them. Once refurbished, the computers are donated to local schools. But inmates say not every machine was clean. Every, every truck that came in would have some on it that they just didn't take the stuff off. We had a free hand to do anything we wanted to. You could have as much pornography on your computers as you wanted, as long as they didn't catch you with it. They run wild. They really run wild. As he neared his release date, James Middleton jotted down some information off a Department of Transportation computer he was working on. It had all of her bank records, where she refinanced her house with her social security numbers, for all of her kids. So I wrote down her, her cell and her husband's cell. And when I get a phone, I'm going to call her and explain not to ever do that again. A few weeks later, after he'd gotten a cell phone, Middleton asked us to witness and record this call. You want to talk to her first and explain yeah. to her who you are? I'm a news reporter from Nashville, Tennessee. As you can imagine, the woman was a little shocked to learn that her state computer ended up still loaded with data in a prison. I found the combination to the vault in your master bedroom closet the application when you refinanced your house to add on, which had all your kids' names, social security numbers, all this was information that never should have gotten to a prison. I wiped it clean and I made, the only thing I copied was your number so I could tell you to don't ever let that information get away from you again because they don't protect it like they're supposed to. So when they took it surplus that they didn't completely wipe it clean is what you're saying? Well, I mean, I appreciate you guys calling me and, and telling me that. Yeah, she was just lucky. Uh, lots of people would have got that and would have sold those numbers. And it would have caused her, her and her children a lot of problems. When we began asking the state about this prison work program, corrections officials stepped in. They told us, out of an abundance of caution, our Office of Investigations and Compliance removed some of the computers from the Class 4 inspection. We are confident we have done our due diligence.
Misconduct is nothing new in Tennessee prisons. We've been reporting for years now on the party behind bars. Inmates with cell phones, weed, weapons, boasting and posting their adventures to social media. Now the News 4i team has uncovered a new concern, something we took straight to the TBI. What appears to be an active extortion scheme operating inside the core civic Trousdale Turner prison and victimizing inmate families on the outside. When, when did this money thing start? As soon as he got here, I had never heard of it until he got here. This disabled widow has a son serving time at Trousdale Turner Correctional Facility. She says he began calling almost immediately after arriving here, claiming gangs had marked him as a target. And the only thing that could keep him safe was money. I just had to stop and pull over and pay $50 through Western Union today on my way here. Last week it was $200 and that was supposed to be for protection from the other gangs beating him up. It, it just goes on and on. Several times a week, sometimes several times a day, this mother has been sending $25, $50, $100 through Western Union to Memphis, Cordova, Nashville, often to the same names. Sometimes anyone can pick it up without even showing an ID. All they have to do is recite a prearranged question and answer, like color and blue. It's um, pushed her to the financial and, and emotional breaking point. I can't. I'm a disabled widow and um, I actually have gone to advance financial if that's crazy enough. And, and now I have two full credit cards. You know, I don't know who to call, who to get help from. And um, you can hear the fear in his voice. But could it be more than just the gangs profiting from others? We listened on the telephone as her son okay, described what line, needed to happen one day before 3 p.m. $300 would allegedly get behavioral okay. write-ups wiped them? off his record on the prison computer. Are we going to get it in time to where they can pull that out of the file before it gets put in the computer? An inmate liaison claimed he had made arrangements to pay someone on the core civic staff to do it. I mean, there's a lot of write-ups, you know. You don't get 10 people to pay them, you know. They're making plenty of money. But too much How many time. times have you been beat up by these people? I've talked to several core civic correctional officers who say they have questioned why write-ups they've submitted later seem to have disappeared from the official computer record. They say even perpetual troublemakers seem to have disciplinary reports that don't show up. A damning audit was released yesterday pointing out severe staff shortages and incomplete record keeping at Trousdale Turner Correctional Facility. Today, the Commissioner of Correction was grilled about that and more by some lawmakers who say they are tired of second, third, even fourth chances for Core Civic. The auditors went line by line explaining every black mark given to Core Civic. To determine staffing at the Trousdale prison, they needed to see daily shift rosters. And we made it specifically clear that you know, we wanted the actual rosters of the day. I got a the, the stack of papers from them, and I thumbed through them, and I noticed that there were some blank rosters. Some of that paperwork was completely blank. It was only after the comptroller left that Core Civic tried to submit new pages. They attempted to give the rosters to the auditors, and I, I think at that time the auditors determined that it was not appropriate for them to take the rosters. So, uh, again, that's, that's what I was told. Commissioner of Correction Tony Parker answered to the committee today, not the company that actually runs the facility, Core Civic, and much of what he said didn't satisfy the group. My concern is that I specifically asked you whether you'd gone back and looked at the records to find out what the exact circumstances were about the absences, what gates were unmanned, what posts were unfilled, what dangers were present, and you all haven't done that. The hearing that was scheduled for 30 minutes went two hours, and it's still not over for TDOC or Core Civic. This committee will be back in a month to continue the conversation. It's a given that the Department of Correction will continue to operate, but the fuse has been lit again in the debate over private prisons in Tennessee. 20 years running, it's the same vendor creating the same problems.